the Gleason's map or the azimuthal equidistant projection. You know the one, you've probably seen it printed on tote bags and t-shirts, as if branding a mistake suddenly becomes less of a mistake. Today we're going through everything wrong with the flat earth map, we're going full surgeon mode, it's time to dissect it properly. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon and Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Right then, strap yourselves in, because today we're looking at the single most poorly designed, self-contradicting, mathematically allergic diagram ever to hit the internet, the flat earth map. And spoiler, it collapses faster than a helium balloon satellite when the balloon is popped, apparently. Let's get into it, shall we? And section one is distances. The map falls apart before we even start. This is a big one, distances, to be honest with you. On a flat earth map, everything is stretched outward from the North Pole. And when I say stretched, I mean stretched, like someone grabbed South America with a pair of tongs and said, let's see how far this goes. To understand how broken it is, let's do some comparison. Example one, Johannesburg to Perth. In the real world, it's 8,300 kilometers, but on the flat map, it looks more like 15,000 kilometers. And what's the flat earth explanation? Planes go faster than we're told here. Yes, that old chestnut. Because obviously Boeing is conspiring to hide the fact that they can do double the speed that they should be able to. Example two is Santiago to Sydney. This one is one of my favorite. On a globe, 11,300 kilometers. A long haul flight, we all agree. On a flat map, you could probably squeeze an entire extra continent between them. It's way too long. The flight should take something more like 30 hours. But in reality, it takes the exact amount of time that the globe predicts. No detours, no refueling stops. And these flights happen every day. Flat earthers pretend that they don't, but they do. You could book one tomorrow. Example three is Buenos Aires to Cape Town. On a globe, it's a reasonable flight distance. On a flat map, these cities are practically in different cosmic neighborhoods. The bottom line is the flat earth map cannot keep distances consistent, not even vaguely. Okay, then section two is time zones, the map that doesn't even know what time it is. So how do time zones work on a globe then? The earth rotates 360 degrees in 24 hours, we know this. That's 15 degrees per hour and the longitudes converge at both poles. This means that time zones get narrower as you get closer to the poles. On a flat map, the longitudes are spaced evenly. The result, the time zones are all the same size. The sun's path doesn't match sunrise times. Entire regions get completely impossible daylight cycles. Let's take somewhere like Dundin, New Zealand. Dundin gets very early summer sunrises and very late summer sunsets. Now that is classic high latitude behavior. But on a flat map, Dundin isn't at a high latitude. It's positioned on the outer ring where distances are exaggerated, meaning their daylight hours make zero geometric sense. The conclusion is if a map can't even tell you what time it is where you are, it's not a map, it's just a place map. Moving on to section three then, the seasons, which is the flat earth map's biggest geometric disaster. Seasons are super simple on a globe. The earth is tilted. Different hemispheres tilt toward or away from the sun. That's it, job done. But on a flat map, they've turned seasons into a circus act. They say in the northern section summer, the sun does a small inner circle. And in the northern sections winter, it moves outward to a bigger outer circle. Sounds okay, I guess, and to check the geometry. Now, in the Northern Hemisphere, that could work. In the flat model, the sun is further away from the UK, for example, in the winter, and closer in the summer. That works. But when you get to the Southern Hemisphere, it becomes a disaster. The sun would need to move faster in order for the day length to be the same. We know that it doesn't. On a flat map, the daylight would need to be everywhere around the edge of the disk, all at once for months at a time. We do not observe this at all. The axial tilt of Earth is responsible for the seasons, the length of day, the angle of sunlight, and flat earthers remove the tilt entirely, which means seasons shouldn't exist at all. That's why flat earthers keep reinventing the path of the sun. You can watch them change their flat earth model every six months, like they're updating Fortnite. Right then, section four is a biggie, Antarctica. The 78,000 mile ice ring that isn't real. On a flat map, Antarctica is a giant ice ring that surrounds the entire world. Its coastline on a flat map would be around 78,000 miles long. 
Now for comparison, the actual coastline is 11,000 miles long. That's a difference of 67,000 miles, by the way. So here is where this falls apart. Firstly, circumnavigation. Antarctica has been circumnavigated many times. Sailors, explorers, racers, even tourists on cruise ships. Nobody's traveled 78,000 miles doing that. Next, the actual shape of the Antarctic coastline. On a flat map, it should be concave. It should curve inward as you go round. It doesn't do that. It is a continent in its own right. And then we've got flights over Antarctica. Tourist flights go over Antarctica regularly. On a flat earth map, these flights would require impossible travel times, impossible amounts of fuel, and pilots with nerves of steel. And then we've got the obvious, satellite passes and ISS pictures. Every orbital pass over the poles confirms Antarctica is a continent and absolutely shreds the flat earth map apart. Antarctica, ironically, is the thing that destroys the flat earth theory the most. Right, section five then, which is GPS and navigation, and why pilots laugh at this flat earth map the most. And that's mainly because it's so inaccurate. Latitude and longitude are spherical systems. The equations only work on a globe. Great circles require a globe. Pilots fly great circle routes. Ships rely on spherical calculations too. And of course, GPS satellites orbit the Earth and provide data that only makes sense on a globe. If the flat map was real, all GPS data would be wrong, all navigation would fail, and SpaceX would be firing rockets into the sea every day. Ignore that one. And finally, section six, the final twist. The flat earth map is literally a globe projection. This is the punchline, by the way. The flat earth map, the one they defend, the one that's on posters and t-shirts and mouse mats, is literally a projection of the globe. The azimuthal equidistant projection is designed to take a sphere and flatten it. It's not evidence the world is flat. It's evidence that the world is a sphere. Because without a spherical world, this projection couldn't exist. It's the ultimate irony. They're holding up a map created using globe maths and then claiming it proves the Earth is flat. It's like printing a photo of yourself and insisting the paper is the real you. So that is everything wrong with the flat Earth map. I'm sure there's much more. Distance is broken, sunlight broken, time zones broken, seasons broken, Antarctica and navigation broken, and the map itself a flattened globe. And that's where we're gonna finish for another video. Please do let me know in the comments what you thought of this one, as well as any other problems you see with the flat Earth map. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today as ever. If you appreciated it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day. I'll see you all tomorrow for the return of CC. He's back. See you then. <laughs>